Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and with Steam Next Fest underway from the 13th to the 20th of June, I thought I'd try something a little different for it this year and provide some recommendations for demos that you might want to check out during the festival. There are hundreds to play across countless genres, but these games are the ones I've been able to spend time with ahead of the festival, and after it's over, you can expect a review of the festival as a whole, highlighting some of the best from Next Fest beyond what you're hearing about today. As always, I've got a bit of a genre focus on the channel as outlined in the title of this video too, and if you have any thoughts of your own, I absolutely welcome them in the comments down below. Now, with no more time to waste and with timestamps below to jump around as you wish, let's begin. Terra Invicta is an intense, hard sci-fi grand strategy game that I've had my eyes on for a couple years now, and you can actually find a deeper dive into its many mechanics and ideas in a separate video I'll link in the pinned comment and description down below. Set in the not-so-distant future, Terra Invicta will put you in charge of one of many factions as humanity contends with the arrival of aliens in our solar system. While the next fest demo will have just one of the factions as playable, pitting you against the others, the full game set to release later this year will allow you to choose from seven different sets of ideological factions. If one believes the aliens represent a threat that needs to be eliminated, another believes bending the knee to the alien is the only way to secure humanity. If one faction will eradicate alien and alien sympathizers alike, another will seek to help humanity escape the solar system and find safe haven elsewhere. Whichever you choose to play and whatever your faction's end goal may be, your first order of business is to wrangle the nations of the world, hiring and using counselors to influence public sentiment across nations, trying to convince some to join your cause while actively working against the other factions. Those that join your cause will help generate a variety of resources based on real world and current representations of national capabilities, but you will have influence over how these nations under your control end up developing. As an example for how the game begins though, there are resources that reflect your ability to launch into space, and the nations that are best at generating those are the ones that have actual active space programs or launch pads in the real world at the start date. Now, you might think that these specific countries become hot zones for your politicking, and while you're right that going into space to contend with the aliens and other factions is crucial, there are many other resources that other nations might excel at, from materials needed to actually manufacture parts and ships, to military strength you can use on Earth to acquire more territory and resources, to science generation that helps progress technology. And even here with the tech tree, there's plenty of obfuscation to keep you on your toes, all while needing to choose between cooperating with other factions for some of the bigger technological leaps, or opting to focus on your own faction's gains at the cost of having less influence on how the bigger steps play out. Everything becomes this great big push and pull, and that's before you're even engaging with the aliens. With enough resources, you eventually take to space, building space stations at various levels of orbit and eventually establishing stations on the moon, on other planets, on their moons, and on asteroids alike, and of course, around each of these celestial bodies too, if relevant. These stations can be used to build ships in space, they can be used as early warning systems, or they can be used to mine more advanced resources needed for more advanced pieces of equipment, including the ships you'll be designing and building for use in battle. As you expand into space, you'll need to develop strategically, considering orbits, travel times, and gravity assists as the game takes a very hard approach to the science part of science fiction. You'll be managing fuel and munitions, you'll be tracking and intercepting ships as they travel from place to place, and you'll need to keep an eye on your supply chain and its viability as you get stretched thin. When the inevitable clashes begin, you can take control of the battles or leave them up to the AI, and the demo actually includes a skirmish mode you can play to engage in battles outside of the context of a campaign, and fighting battles involves a whole other layer of strategic and tactical thinking. As you can see here, you'll be in charge of how ships move, what thrusters they use at what time, what angles they're rotating to, their pitch, their yaw, their roll, it'll all impact the decisions you make in terms of how the ships are actually designed, there's a lot going on, and between the battles and the larger scale campaign activities, Terra Invicta is going to be a challenging game with lots of moving parts and pieces when it eventually releases later this year, and the next fest demo gives you a great chance to check it out and see how it feels. It's definitely a game that becomes less daunting as you play it as opposed to hearing about it, and between that simple fact and just how intense and fun it is, I think Terra Invicta is a must-play 
during NextFest. Terra Nil was playable at NextFest just about a year ago, and I'm excited to see it back on the menu this year after a slew of updates. At its core, the game builds itself as a reverse city builder, taking a very unique premise and building something rather beautiful out of it. Your responsibility in Terra Nil is to reclaim plot after plot of Wasteland, and while this might sound rather simple, the gameplay's blend of puzzle solving and, in a way, city building is anything but. With limited space at your disposal and only a handful of tools that each have their own prerequisites and limitations, you'll need to take advantage of what each of these uniquely generated wasteland plots have to offer while avoiding their troubles and accounting for their vagaries. With that said, I don't think the game is one you're supposed to be tearing your hair out over. It's significantly more tranquil than most, and while it's by no means a cakewalk, the impression I get is a game about beating yourself and improving on your own past performances rather than something hyper-competitive that's looking to crush you if you make a single mistake. As you go from plot to plot, different biomes open up different approaches, but at the most basic level, you're just trying to revitalize the region and bring it back to life based on certain specifications. Seeing a barren hellscape brought back to life with flora and fauna, and all the sounds and visuals that go with them is a very fulfilling experience, but once you've revitalized one plot, it's time to move on to the next, take on its unique challenges and opportunities, and rinse and repeat. Perenil is a strong game with a strong concept built on a simple foundation. There isn't much else to say or explain about it, really, other than my recommendation to check it out for yourself during NextFest to see if you like the premise before its potential release later this year. Revival Recolonization is a very interesting turn-based 4X game set in the far future of our world in a sort of post-post-apocalypse situation. Blending science fiction and fantastical elements, you'll see everything from automatons and zombies to seemingly magic-infused trees and terraforming capabilities, all while taking a fledgling clan through multiple eras of technological rediscovery. Though the game is definitely set in the far future, the collapse of society has basically regressed technology where we're using sticks and stones to fight, at least at the beginning, with the promise of far more advanced technology being made available down the line. Most of the core functionality will be familiar to the fans of the genre, establishing cities, distributing populations, recruiting workers and units, finding artifacts and items in ruins, and making decisions that have consequences down the line, but there are quite a few mechanics that help revival recolonization stand out. For one, you primarily lead a hero character, of which there are two for the next fest demo, and as this hero character, you're able to take on a leadership role among one of the many clans scattered across the world. Each clan has its own strengths and weaknesses, and while you'll compete with other heroes such as yourself to find a suitable group to lead, you'll also spend time participating in diplomacy with those that don't have leaders, trading units, offering vassal status, or warring. Battles themselves are more akin to Humankind or the Endless Legends games, where the map itself transforms into the battlefield with engaging stacks spreading out over deployment zones, fighting over multiple rounds, and actually using the environment where the battle took place to, well, influence how the battle plays out. But where things get even more interesting in battle is through the use of unit customization and environmental manipulation. Unit customization is something I'm always excited to see in games, and there seem to be some really interesting concepts at play here. Different unit classes can have different baselines on top of which you can apply various modifiers in the form of equipment choices. Whether it's a specific axe or sword to get extra damage output or armor piercing, or it's a map to improve movement speeds, there's a good bit of variety, and your decisions need to keep in mind the actual resources you have on hand to produce the units too. Some equipment might require a specific strategic resource, for example, and so you'll need to plan your units out accordingly. Environmental manipulation, meanwhile, comes from your heroes using edicts to temporarily shift and terraform the world, changing temperatures to be more suited to your clan compared to the enemies that they might be fighting, causing damage over time in an area, or otherwise bringing about the birth of entire mountains and volcanoes. This terrain manipulation is a very cool concept, and it goes beyond combat too. As I said, different clans have different traits. One among them is what type of climates they prefer to operate in. Using edicts to make terrain more suitable might give them buffs in battle or might be used to give enemies debuffs in a similar situation. But outside of battle, this terrain manipulation can be used to move mountains out of the way for city expansion or to make 
useless land more suitable for, say, farming or mining or what have you. It's a really interesting idea. It's very different from anything I've seen anywhere else before, I think. I, I, I can't think of any other game that approaches the environment in this way. I can't think of at least any other 4X game that approaches the environment in this way. Now, naturally, there's a tech tree that takes you from era to era, unlocking districts for city building or unit archetypes or weapon options. But beyond the regular tech tree, there's an edict tech tree where you can unlock more such environmental manipulations. And there's an empire path tree as well to further shape the future of your people. I could talk about this game for a lot longer. There are many moving parts, and I think they're all very interesting to check out in this demo to see if they're up your alley before the game releases later this year. I was very intrigued by this one, and I've covered some of the biggest aspects that kept me intrigued through my time with the demo, and all the little details I'll leave for you to discover on your own. One Military Camp is a fun tycoon management game that reminded me of the likes of Two Point Hospital, taking a serious topic, giving it a comedic twist if even slightly, and putting you in charge of the chaos that ensues. There's a very simple storyline that drives the game. Your nation has been almost entirely conquered by a foreign entity, and only one military base remains, one that you've just been assigned to. The only reason it's still standing is because it's not really much of a base, and the enemy didn't even consider it a threat. With that premise in place, you need to build up the base, hire staff and soldiers, train them up, and send them off to execute missions, which will give you access to more resources to work with as you liberate your nation across multiple territories. Building your base currently involves setting up roads and dealing with power distribution as you build barracks for people to sleep in, canteens for them to eat at, and various types of training buildings for them to improve their skills or, separately, to help them be better specialists. Each recruit, whether they've been taken on as staff or as soldiers, will have certain strengths and weaknesses, and as the person in charge of this outfit, you'll need to pick who serves the army in which way, either as a communications officer, working with artillery, as infantry, so on and so forth. And between upgrades to their base skills and time spent training their specialization, your soldiers will get better at the tasks they perform. Mechanics and cooks and the like also need to be looked after, and as you manage shifts and tasks throughout the day, you'll need to keep an eye on people's moods, walking distances, and overall efficiency. All the standard trappings of a tycoon game, pretty much, but you'll need to acquire resources too, as mentioned previously, and though you'll start with access to some, a prolonged war effort relies heavily on a capable and sustainable supply chain. To that end, you'll take on the aforementioned missions, matching the prerequisite task force requirements, training appropriately in order to increase the chance of success, and hoping for victory that unlocks access to more tools and resources, all while bringing freedom back to the people. The art style here is quite cheeky with fun animations and ideas and quirks across the board, the idea itself is very nicely executed, and though the demo doesn't include a functioning research tree just yet, the plan is to have over 100 technologies to research when the game ultimately releases. That should add some well-deserved longevity and room for exploration in the final build as well. For now though, the demo provides a decent opportunity to explore the game before it releases later this year. Sweet Transit is a very interesting city builder slash railroad tycoon blend that you may have seen me cover on the channel before. For an in-depth look at the game, don't hesitate to check out the video I've linked in the description and pinned comment down below, but to give you a quick rundown, Sweet Transit puts you in charge of a massive tract of randomly generated land, and it asks you to establish human civilization in this otherwise untouched parcel of land. Starting from a village hall and a few houses, you look to establish massive cities using your rail network to transport goods and people alike. On the one hand, you'll be ensuring workers are taken to the various resource gathering and producing jobs, and on the other, you'll be bringing the resulting resources to a central warehouse from where you'll be able to use the resources to build and expand your cities. Whether it's coal to actually fuel your trains, wood and stone to build houses with, or various kinds of food to keep citizens happy and to keep your cities actually growing, Sweet Transit will challenge you to manage the flow of resources, tourists and laborers, asking you to design the trains, the tracks they'll operate on, and the routes they'll be using, all while taking into consideration Things like which directions they can move in, if you need crossings and junctions, if you need loops, and how you need to distribute the signals along your track to keep traffic flowing smoothly. 
track design and station design is entirely in your hands and very modular, allowing you to create rather intricate layouts and put them to the test. And whether you're a huge train fan, big on city builders, or just curious about either, I think Sweet Transit is an excellent blend of the two with some great ideas of its own. I highly recommend checking this beautiful demo out during NextFest before the game releases later this year. Zombie Cure Lab is a charming colony building game that takes you to the mythical land of Canada in the midst of a zombie apocalypse. You start with a small group of individuals and a large clearing where you can establish your colony, complete with bedrooms, kitchens, storage areas, and other such standard elements, and where you proceed to gather resources, establish production methods for more advanced equipment, and build defenses for the inevitable attacks by zombies. As your colony grows in population and footprint, you'll start to draw the attention of more and more zombies each night, and to fight them off, you'll need to establish walls and defensive weapons. Now, these weapons aren't anything like what you'd expect, though, because your goal isn't to kill these zombies, but instead to cure them, or at least to stabilize them. Using things like snowball machines, you look to freeze the zombies when they attack, and then, before they can thaw, you try to collect and cure them, turning them into what the game calls humbies, zombies who have been de-zombified, but only to a certain extent, until over a long period of time, they revert to full human status. You'll manage these two population types as you continue to grow and face bigger threats, but while humans are okay at all tasks, Humbies are particularly strong and better for strength-related tasks. Though, when they're unhappy, they revert to their more primal ways and start eating people. Managing these two population types, looking to meet their individualized needs, all while researching more advanced technologies for everything from rest to training, keeps you pretty busy. Resource management, task management, and mood management are key aspects of the game as you try to keep everybody fed, rested, happy, and perhaps most importantly, human. It's a charming game with a very fun idea, and it's not afraid to embrace a quirkier side to survival colony building. If that sounds right up your alley, then don't hesitate to check it out during Steam Next Fest. There are plenty more games to see and play during Steam Next Fest, but I think these are some that are well worth your time, with a spread across a variety of genres for fans of all sorts. You can expect a video from me after the festival is over, looking back at it with more top picks as well, and if you're interested in that, as well as more strategy, management, and sim gaming news, reviews, let's plays, and more, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.